Guys, recruiting is absolutely crazy right now. We've got bidding wars going on left and right. We've got a major announcement from a superstar defensive line prospect. And we've got a superstar five-star quarterback deciding tomorrow. So guys, big story, Jason Moore. Credit to my number one source. He was all over it. Yesterday, I talked about it. I said... My number one source expects Jason Moore to announce within the week and then let, you know, late, late, late uh, yesterday afternoon, we get a tweet from Jason Moore that he's going to be announcing on Sunday night. I mean, you could have picked a little bit of a, be of a better time to announce than Sunday night. That's, that's literally the, like the worst time. I'm just joking, but I mean, Sunday night at seven o'clock, that's a tough announcement time. I'm not going to be able to do a video after that. You know, like, if you announce at noon on a Saturday, that's beautiful. Sunday night. But, guys, I'm just messing around. Jason Moore, Ohio State, Notre Dame, Penn State, Michigan. His top four. And what a job by Larry Johnson and this, and this Ohio State class. We really are seeing Ohio State recruiting start right back up again. We had one bad week of information one bad week of intel. It happens. Prospects started to trend away. You have the Darren Reed situation. But guys, Ohio State, they're not going to let that deter them from having a Grand Slam home run July that's going to culminate with the commitment of Caleb Downs at the end of July. Mark my words on that. So Jason Moore, the top 60 prospect. It'll be Ohio State's second D-line commit. He will be with Will Smith, and then they're also gunning for John Walker, who announces at the end of this month and is deciding between Ohio State, UCF, and Florida. Maybe a little bit of NIL stuff going on with Florida, but the bottom line, Jason Moore expected to be the next Ohio State commit. I don't want to ruin his announcement. Maybe, you know, I'm not going to say where he's going, but we can all kind of assume with Jason Moore the situation there. So there's going to be some great news Sunday night for Ohio State. Guys, we've got some bad news for Michigan. Uh, Dante Moore, the situation has been trending away for months. This was a recruitment that was kind of hijacked by the NIL situation. It'll be very interesting to see the type of deal Dante Moore gets from Phil Knight and Nike. Once he commits to Oregon, everybody expects this is happening on Friday. He recently, a few weeks ago, made his official visit to Oregon. Of course, this kid is from Michigan. And it's crazy, guys. I just want to, just my observation on this whole thing. The idea that a five-star superstar quarterback from the state of Michigan would be going to Oregon. That idea three years ago would have been ridiculous. But in this day and age with NIL, this is the type of stuff that happens. And from a Michigan perspective, listen, the NIL thing really messed up this recruitment. I think if NIL isn't involved, Dante Moore's either going to Notre Dame or Michigan. But Jim Harbaugh, he just struggles to relate to kids. Jim Harbaugh is supposed to be some QB guru ever since his time with Andrew Luck at Stanford, and he just cannot get any big commits. And then they'll say, oh, he got J.J. McCarthy. The only reason he got J.J. McCarthy was because Ryan Day and Brian Kelly both passed on J.J. McCarthy in favor of other quarterbacks. J.J. McCarthy wanted to commit to Ohio State. Ohio State took Kyle McCord. He wanted to commit to Notre Dame. Notre Dame took another quarterback, then he went to Michigan, and part of him going to Michigan was kind of out of spite against Ohio State. So Jim Harbaugh, just, I mean, who has, what is a huge big name QB that Jim Harbaugh has landed? You can blame NIL for the Dante Moore situation, and it certainly is a major factor, but I think Dante Moore without NIL, I think he goes to Notre Dame. I don't even think he goes to Michigan. So Jim Harbaugh just struggling to relate to quarterbacks. Uh, tries, you know, he's this QB guru. It just hasn't worked out for Michigan. It's disappointing. Their class continues to lag behind at this point. We'll see if they can land some players. I still don't think they have a top 100 player. I know the linebacker Wilson recently was a top 100 player, but he decommitted from Michigan. And it looks like he's going to Georgia. So Georgia is another team lighting it up on the recruiting trail. But guys, 
let me just, there's a few things. Number one, Alabama, I guarantee you, is going to have the number one class in the nation. I don't even think it's close. The state of Alabama, how talented it is, it is this year, I think it's overrated. But either way, it's ridiculously talented. And I'm looking at some of these players. Alabama's going to land like eight five stars, guys. It's so ridiculous. It's so demoralizing. But just be ready for Alabama to go on an unbelievable commitment run. They already have a, a really good average as it is, but they don't have a lot of commits. They're, to me, I think they're unless A and M has like some crazy NIL operative that they're they're going to start up like they did in 2022. Of course, I think it's different this year because we're seeing a lot more schools jump in the NIL game, like Miami, like LSU. How about this Jalen Brown? Uh, this story. So this is a very interesting, uh, you know, kid. He's a receiver. He's a five-star. He's from Miami, Florida. It looked like he was going to Miami. And then, reading the tea leaves, he's making his big announcement soon. And suddenly, he's getting all these crystal balls to LSU. I think this is another bidding war. I think LSU made the best bid, most recent bid, and they're going to land this kid because they paid the most. Take a look at the number one offensive tackle. It was a bidding war between Miami and Tennessee for him. And he ends up picking Miami. It's completely out of control. You look down the list at every five-star. Basically, half of the five-stars are going to be bought through an NIL uh, you know, situation in some way or another. And it's still all developing. But we're seeing multiple situations like this. How about Louisville of all teams? The whole Ruben Owen saga. And now, the num I think the number two offensive guard in the entire nation is also trending to Louisville with, I'm sure, a pretty big NIL deal. So guys, just like I thought back in March and April, I said it was only going to get worse and it wasn't just going to be A&M doing it. Now the other teams are starting to do it. Pretty Miami, I said it was going to be Miami. Miami is heavily involved. LSU is getting desperate because Brian Kelly really can't recruit. I mean, how bad of a recruiter is Brian Kelly? Brian Kelly leaves Notre Dame and suddenly they start recruiting at a historic pace. Now, part of that is Marcus Freeman and Notre Dame fans. Guys, it's crazy. Notre Dame fans are thanking Brian Kelly for leaving them. That's how much better of a recruiter Marcus Freeman is than Brian Kelly. But guys, I'm telling you, Ohio State will finish with a better class than Notre Dame. I think it's, unfortunately, if I'm going to be real, I don't see a single scenario where Ohio State has a better class than Alabama. I don't see a single scenario. That it's the, like in terms of average, in terms of total commits, in terms of five stars, unless Ohio State gets major bumps and some of these kids from the state of Alabama get knocked down, because I think some of them are overrated. I mean, like the 11th player in Alabama is the 80th best player in the country? Come on. That's not correct. That's simply not correct. But guys, Ohio State, it's going to be impossible for us to finish in front of Alabama. But maybe they finish, depending on how things go with the top targets, third or fourth, I'm thinking right now. We'll see... Maybe I mean, I'm expecting at least three five-stars minimum. Possibly Mateo Uilangile. That makes it four. I mean, if you get Caleb Downs, you get the two receivers. Anis Carnell Tate, that's three five-stars. Then there could be a few other ones. Luke Montgomery, I don't like. I don't love his chances of getting bumped up to a five-star status. But Ohio State has a few cornerbacks that are going to be getting major bumps by 247 Sports in the coming weeks. They're going to be having their major midsummer massive rankings update, I believe probably next week. So that's when we'll be seeing that. But guys, Dante Moore going to Notre Dame. I wonder if the NIL deal will get reported. I didn't even talk about this. Miami with that quarterback, uh, Jade, Jaden uh, Rashada, I believe. They gave him a $9 million NIL deal He's not even a five-star. Now, he's fringe. He's close. He might be able to earn his five-star status back, but it's off the rails. Miami is totally out of control. I don't blame them. I mean, if AM is going to blatantly weaponize NIL and use it as a tool to land basically five five-star defensive linemen in the same class, and you're Miami, and you're trying to get to a New Year's Six Bowl for the first time, I think it would be the first. Maybe it would be... No, I, did Miami make a New Year's Six Bowl? Because they started like 11-0 in 2017. I think they, pro yeah, they probably made one. But either way, guys, 
These programs like Louisville, like Miami, I mean Tennessee, Tennessee's gotten out, outbid for a few guys now. I think they land the pass rusher Bradley, who's he's another NIL recruit. It's we're, we're, we're at a loss with how many NIL recruits are, there are, but it'll be very interesting to see the type of deal that gets reported on Dante Moore. Normally, these things get reported right when the players commit or soon thereafter. Nothing against Oregon. It's whatever. They can do it. But it is interesting that this kid's committing to Oregon while Oregon's at a such time of uncertainty. We don't know what's going to happen to the Pac-12. If you guys don't know the whole expansion situation, the two best options for Oregon would be either going to the Big Ten or or going to a massively expanded Pac-12. Those are the two likely scenarios right now for Oregon University. We will see, but guys, paying attention right now just to Ohio State. Great news, Jason Moore. It, it's a guy they needed. The defensive line class was lacking a little bit. This is going to be a big-time pickup, and you get him, you get John Walker. Now you're talking on the defensive line. You'd love to land a five-star true pass rusher, I think that would be hitting it out of the park. But either way, this is a big, big, big get for the Buckeyes. And there's just so much crap going on. How about Malik Muhammad, the almost five-star cornerback, getting crystal balled to Texas. Texas right now, they're out of control. They're spending money left and right. They're trying to get Cedric Baxter Jr. That's another major NIL. I mean, the list goes on and on, guys. The lit with these kids. I could go down through the top 100 prospects list and what I mean by NIL recruit, these kids are getting NIL deals to commit to a school. That's what I mean. And I'm not blaming the kids. This is a free market. If these schools are going to offer this and you're a kid, they're going to take it. It is what it is. That's just the way it works. If you offer a kid $2 million and he's 16 year old, years old and he doesn't have the best you know, overall thought perspective to understand he'll probably end up taking the deal or at least think heavily about it. It's tough to turn down $2 million even if there is a place where you'll get developed better. That's why it was so impressive when Carnell Tate said no to Tennessee in their $3 million NIL offer and he said, no, I want to be developed. And then Tennessee fans said, oh, so you paid more than $3 million. No. If Ohio State paid for Carnell Tate, there would be news on Ohio State paying for Carnell Tate. There is zero rumors now, I will say, there another team, a team that does do a really good job of keeping the NIL stuff under wraps is Georgia. Very little gets reported from Georgia on their NIL deals, and I know they do NIL deals, especially because when they landed A.J. Harris, it was a dead giveaway. It was a dead giveaway, but guys, Ohio State did not pay for Carnell Tate. He knows he when he gets on campus, he'll get his NIL deal. Ohio State's not going to give you an NIL deal just to commit to your school. Ryan Day's been very consistent on that. And then people are like, well, Ryan Day said $13 million. That's just for the players on the roster. Ryan Day was referencing players on the roster potentially getting poached by another school. So he came out and said, we need the boosters to pay $13 million so we can keep the kids we already have on the roster on the team and give them NIL deals. He wasn't saying we need $13 million budget for our 2023 recruiting class. That's not what he was saying. So they're trying to twist it a little bit, guys. And I'm just it's just not going to happen with me. I know what the situation. I know what's going on. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.